very warm welcome to the final event of Leeds International Organ Festival Live. This evening's concert given by our great friend, the Australian virtuoso, Thomas Haywood. And it's a pleasure to be welcoming you from the organ loft of Leeds Cathedral, where we had uh, a mass this morning with a real live congregation, also streamed over our YouTube channel. So it's lovely to be back on the fantastic organ here. Thomas has very kindly recorded an introduction and some programme notes for his recital, so I'm going to hand you over right now to him. Hi everyone, it's great to see you all. Simone and I are so sorry that we couldn't join you this year for the Leeds International Organ Festival. We had such a wonderful time with you all last year and we're very much looking forward to returning again when all of this dreadful pandemic has finally disappeared and we have this long-awaited vaccine. Simone's got together and uh, compiled a few performances we've made from either concerts or some new products that we've got coming at. So we very much hope you enjoy watching these as our little contribution to this year's International Organ Festival. And we thought we'd start, in fact, to bring back some happy memories of a performance of Offenbach's Overture to Orpheus in the Underworld, which we performed for you at Leeds last year.
I hope you all enjoyed that performance. Such a glorious piece and such a magnificent instrument you have in Leeds. I thought next we'd move across to Germany, to Himmerod Abbey, where they have a magnificent Kleiss organ from the early 1960s in one of the most glorious acoustics in Europe. Debussy's Claire de Lune is, of course, an immortal masterpiece with an exquisitely soft and tranquil ending. And uh, as you'll see in this performance, uh, we had a packed abbey and everybody was totally, totally quiet. Except, unfortunately, the United States had the foresight to build a big Air Force base not far from Himmerod Abbey. And uh, yes, anyway, have a listen and enjoy the ending in particular.
Yes, I think it's a shame they didn't have the stealth aircraft. I think they would have heard that coming on Jupiter. But anyway, next I thought we'd, uh, we'd travel down to Hobart in Tasmania. Talk about flying from one end of the world to the other. And last year, Simone and I spent a good deal of time down in beautiful Hobart. For those of you who haven't been to Tasmania, it is the most beautiful, beautiful place. And there's a fantastic three-manual walker organ in the Hobart Town Hall. And that organ was turning 150 this year. It was opened in 1870. And so the Hobart City Council commissioned Simone and I to make a recording on the instrument, actually the very first recording that had ever been made on the organ in its 150 years. And we've uh, made a CD and DVD and MP4 film, MP3 album, all this sort of stuff, called The Heart of Hobart. And we thought we'd have some performances from this for you. And the first is the fabulous, fabulous piece, I absolutely love it, called Litanies, of course, by Jean Alain. Please enjoy.
It's quite an ending, isn't it? Quite an ending. And the Hobart Town Hall really has the most beautiful, beautiful acoustic. Next, I thought, we'll, we'll have something completely with a difference. Now, 2020, this year, which will probably go down in history more for the pandemic than uh, one of the original reasons it would have gone down in history, of course, being Beethoven's 250th anniversary. But mind you, we have 2027, so we can all look forward to that for dear old Ludwig. But uh, I thought we'd have some Beethoven. We've got a little treat for you later on, too. But here's a slow movement from Beethoven's Emperor Concerto. And you'll see through the marvels of modern technology, I'm not only able to play my transcription of the orchestral part on the grand organ in the Hobart Town Hall, but also the solo piano part on their beautiful Steinway Concert Grand. So I think this is one of the first times this has been seen in public, so I hope you enjoy it.
Yes, that is truly one of the most immortal and beautiful pieces of music in the repertoire, isn't it? That gorgeous slow movement of Beethoven's Emperor Piano Concerto. I thought next we'd return to France, or France via Hobart at least, and as they say, have a complete contrast. And this is probably, oh well, with maybe the Carrion Sortie, but this certainly is one of the most famous works of Henri Moulet. I can remember amusingly seeing his name misspelt as a mullet many years ago on a reprint of this particular score. So Henry Mullet, of course, not Henri Moulet, his fabulous Tu es Petra from the Byzantine sketches, the most glorious piece. And when Simone and I first went to see the Hobart Town Hall organ, you know, you, when you sit down and play a new instrument and you think, what will I play? What will my hands and feet tell me that they want to play? It was this piece that, that sprang to mind, actually, the fabulous colours of those marvellous walker reeds, many still from the 19th century. The instrument was rebuilt in the 1960s, but it retains much of its tonal colour, very interestingly, actually, given the, the period of the rebuild from the 1870s. So anyway, hope you enjoy it.
it is such a magnificent ending to that piece, really, isn't it? It's such a shame we don't have more of Moulet's music, such glorious writing and such a great understanding he had of the possibilities of the pipe organ. Now, I thought we'll, we'll hop across the Blue Pacific now from Tasmania over to the west coast of the United States and then across to Lincoln, Nebraska, where there just happens to be one of the finest symphonic organs on the planet. Uh, many of you may not know at the moment, Simone and I are engaged in a very, very big project to record all of the Beethoven symphonies, which I've transcribed on various instruments all around the world. And I've been thinking of which instruments would be particularly appropriate for which symphonies. And for symphony number one, my mind just sprang, of course, to Jack Bethard's fabulous instrument in the First Plymouth Congregational Church in Lincoln, Nebraska. It was his magnum opus until he built the enormous organ in the, um, the big convention center auditorium in Salt Lake City. But it's a fantastic big four manual instrument in a lovely acoustic. And uh, this is the instrument that we featured on our recording of Symphony Number no. 1. And this hasn't yet been seen because the product's going to be released in about oh, three or four weeks. And so we thought we'd give you a little tempter. And this is the last movement of Beethoven's Symphony Number no. 1 in C major, performed on the fabulous Schoenstein organ of First Plymouth Congregational Church in Lincoln, Nebraska. I hope you enjoy it. And if you ever have the time, if you ever happen to be in Nebraska, to go to Lincoln and play the organ, the wonderful Minister of Music there, Tom Trenny, is the most fantastic person. And he would love to show you the organ, I'm sure. It is the most wonderful instrument.
hope you could all see what I mean about the most wonderful organ. It really is an absolutely luxurious and magnificent symphonic instrument. Just really, really outstanding. Well, that's it from us from the other side of the world. I hope you've all enjoyed listening and watching. Simone and I are so thrilled to have been able to present this for you. We were tickled pink when David Pipe contacted us by email and David does the most fantastic job in Leeds and we're just so sorry that we couldn't get across this year. Hopefully next year or the year after when we get the vaccine. I hope you all stay very, very safe and well and all very best of luck to the Leeds International Organ Festival. It's the most wonderful, wonderful thing. Thank you very much. What a lovely way to end our festival, that amazing recital, and our thanks again to Thomas for his generosity and his superb talent. Don't forget our final podcast of this festival, this Friday, the 17th of July. I'm going to be joined by Francis O'Gorman, the English literature professor. We're going to chat about the festival and hopefully some of the topics, again, we've covered over the last few weeks. If you've enjoyed these concerts and you feel able to do so, please do think about donating to us details to follow. Uh, we hope next year, all being well, we'll have a live festival and details will be up on our website, uh, Leeds International Organ Festival website, and we hope between now and then to continue with some videos on this YouTube channel and perhaps the occasional podcast if you can tolerate listening to me a little bit more every so often. So thank you for your support. I do hope you're all staying safe and watch out for us in 2021 when, fingers crossed, we'll be back in Leeds Cathedral for a live Leeds International Organ Festival. Thank you.